Alright guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about creating new users in a Kubernetes cluster. I'm going to be showing you a couple of different methods. If you are using EKS or a managed Kubernetes offering from a cloud, uh, you're probably not going to be doing all these things. But then it's still very useful to know how, like, how all this happens. The first thing that we'll need uh, for creating a new user is basically a, a private key file and a certificate signing request. So we're going to be using OpenSSL to create both of those things, right? So you can use multiple commands to do this, but I actually found one command that can both create a, a private key file and a certificate signing request. So I'll tell you what the CSR means. But then for now, let's use this command to create, for example, a user called Tony Robbins or whatever. So Tony R. So I'm going to take this command and run it in my Kubernetes cluster. So when I run this, I get like a couple of files, right? So one is the private key file. The next one is the, the certificate signing request. Now, at this point, actually, we need to sign this certificate signing request, the CSR file. What we need is basically um, the CA uh, files, actually. So CA is basically the certificate authority, which actually signs the certificate signing requests. Uh, your CA fi files in your Kubernetes cluster can be found using this command over here. So basically you're actually looking into your controller manager YAML file, right? So if you look into this directory, and that is if you installed your cluster using kubeadm, if you used a different installation method, you're gonna have different directories. So don't take me for granted here. So these are basically the, the certificate authority files. So you need these files to sign the, the, uh, the CSR request actually. So let me actually go to this directory and let me run this command. So you have a cert file and you have a private key file, which is, is both belongs to the, the CA. What you can do is you can use this command over here, again, an open SSL command where you're inputting your CSR file. This is the new file that would come from a new user. Let's say a user generates these files and gives it to you. You need to copy it to your, basically your CA server. And in this case, actually I'm on my master node, but it could be a totally different server, right? So if you're using OpenSSL, it doesn't have to be part of the Kubernetes server itself, a Kubernetes cluster itself. And so you're inputting the CSR file, and then you're also providing your CA files as input. And then the output of which uh, the output of which is basically a, a certificate file, and this is the main uh, main file, the cert file that we need for authenticating a new user actually. And then you can also specify the expiration uh, in terms of number of days. Let me copy this, and I want to go back to the directory where my CSR is, which is this Tony directory, and I am actually going to paste this command, and that should create a CRT file, a cert file, which is the main thing. Now, here's the other thing. So this is basically the OpenSSL method, right? Where we manually run this OpenSSL command to actually uh, sign the request and create the CRT file, the cert file. Well, you can also do this uh, using kubectl commands. So in Kubernetes, there is a resource or object called certificate signing request. Okay. So if, for example, let's say, let's say actually we want to use kubectl method. So I'm going to actually um, use this YAML file. So let me actually create a YAML file. I'm going to call it Tony or dot yaml i'm going to paste this and then over here so there's a bunch of things over here you can actually like look at kubernetes documentation to understand what these things mean but basically the main thing that we need to understand here is this request field over here and then you need to provide the output from 
your uh, your CSR file again actually I just want to uh, mention that uh, what we are doing is actually you know we are we are going to actually sign the CSR request but this time using the kubectl method not the open SSL method okay so let's save this and then let's take a look at the CSR file so you have the CSR file over here but then the the text that you're going to or the alphanumeric uh, string that you're going to mention here is basically going to be in base 64 encoded form so I would use this command actually to get that so we don't need this we actually need this right so I'm going to copy that into my YAML file so that's the base 64 encoded format of the CSR uh, file actually right so I'm going to save that and let me go ahead and apply that YAML file so we have created a CSR request right so using the CSR file that we received from the user now let me run this command and they'll show you all the CSRs received so what oh yeah so we have one CSR right called Tony R CSR and then the condition of which is pending now as an admin I can actually approve or sign this CSR request right so we are going to sign the certificate basically and then if you run the kubectl get CSR command now you can see it's been approved and issued actually so at this point you can generate um, a CRT file okay so you using this command so you're gonna get CSR and then you're gonna get the output in the JSON format and just grab this particular thing and then most importantly we are going to decode it okay? because this is going to be in base 64 encoded format we're going to decode it and then we're going to redirect that into a certificate file okay so since actually we already created a similar cert file i'm just going to just give a different name for it so now you have that actually so basically you have the cert files so using the cert file you can create the user at this point and how do you do that you need to use these kubectl commands so one is actually for kind of like uh, setting the credentials and that would actually be used in our next command so we're going to do kubectl config set credentials and then the name of the credential slash user and then we are going to use the the private key that was generated in the first step using the open SSL command over here and this actually comes from the user as well and then we're going to use the cert that was generated by one of these methods okay so I'm going to copy this command and run it so a new user called Tony-R has been created now at this point we can create a context or set context and then you can also call that Tony-R and then you're going to specify which cluster it's for you can also specify which namespace that you want uh, you want to be default for this particular context and so on and then the main thing is you want to specify this the same credential that uh, the name that we 
mentioned in the previous command okay so we're going to copy that and we're going to run that so basically we've created a context so the way you check that is by using uh, let me clear the screen so kubectl config get context so that shows all the context so you can see that that the stony r is available now now if i run kubectl get sorry kubectl get pods it will work because right now we are still using an admin context or admin user so if i switch to a different context using this command i won't be able to run it so at this point the stony r has been authenticated it hasn't been authorized to do anything so for that actually i'm going to use a uh, a role based access control to provide some kind of authorization so let me switch back to the admin user to create to assign that role okay and at this point we can use another yaml file and we want to basically assign a role you know a role that i've already created which is going to provide access to our pods actually so in here i'm going to change the name to tony r because that's the user that we are binding this particular role with and then this role was created before so i'm not showing you how to create this role itself save it and then kubectl apply and let's bind that role so the role is binded successfully and switching context to the new user context and then at, at this point if i run get pods it should work previously it did not work okay so that is basically authent authentication and authorization and that's basically what happens in a kubernetes cluster i hope that was useful and feel free to check out my kubernetes playlist it's got a lot of useful information and uh, i'll see you guys on the other side thank you